everyone. Happy Friday. Happy early Friday. And just a reminder, this is a this is a pre-hero hour. So um, even though your hero members were invited, just don't have time these days for doing a bunch of other stuff. And and honestly, this is a really cool topic, the being able to use computer use from Anthropic. Mm -hmm. And the, they have the API calls, but as X and I were playing with it, and we're like, you know, we don't we don't think we'll be using it ourselves, but we're gonna we're gonna the API has the ability to send it the screenshots, get the locations and stuff. And then we're going to build in the method for actions. Now, ChatGPT had that kind of stuff, but didn't have that you can, hey, here's how you go click it, right? Right. Or, or they didn't have an example. You had to figure it out, right? So, yeah. So, what we're going to do right now, and we're going to try to take it as quickly as possible, is the installation of Docker and the setup of their agent so that you can do it yourself and you can play with it yourself. And later on, you can, you know, go from there. Yeah. And I, so it was one of the things we were trying to figure out how to create an image of Docker all configured where we go, here you go, go play with it. And we're like, damn, it's it's unfortunately not. <laughs> and Docker is an enormous topic, by the way, also, which is more like, right. we'll, we'll breeze through it. But go ahead, Azaz. What I'm going to do, I'm going to share my screen. All right. I'm not sure if I am. Oh, there it is. And um, I will show you the installation of Docker. And while it's getting installed, we I'm going to explain a little bit what it is. So you just have to go to Docker, you know, to docker.com and go to your Windows install, right? They have a download section in which you download Docker for Windows. Once it is downloaded, which I already did, it is about half a gig, right? And this is kind of like a virtual virtualized environment. The installation is really straightforward. Once you get the installer app, you just go ahead and double click on it. And you just get these two options, whether to add a shortcut or use the WSL instead of a Hyper-B. This is not really important. Just go hit OK, and it will just go ahead and start installing. Now, think about us. Uh, I don't know if you have played with um, VirtualBox or VMware, which are kind of like environments, virtual environments that you set up. Docker is similar. It's not the same, but it's similar. And I will describe stuff in terms of that because it's easier to get. So Docker creates this virtual locations that are separate from one another using your computer resources. And the way how it builds it is from what is called an image, all right? So that's what we're going to get from Anthropic. We're going to get some images. The cool thing about those images is that they're simply text files and certain things that Docker reads those files and builds what is called a container. Think about a container as what you think about when you create a virtual machine. It's basically the same thing. But that virtual machine is special. It doesn't behave as normal virtual machines. And Docker makes sure that all your virtual environments um, have enough resources to work directly. That's it. Let me interrupt you there just for a second. Say. So I watched a really good video on one of the things about Docker. And, and, and it helped me grasp it because it was like, Virtualization versus a you know a Docker is it the same thing? And in the video, he was saying like in a virtualization, you know, and especially like on the Amazon Cloud too, you take slices of your memory and your CPU power stuff and divide it up amongst other things. With a Docker, think of it more as like a real container, like you said, right? You have access to your whole resources. It's not slicing them thinner, right? But it's protected in that like what can um, what it can access, right? And that right. helped me really better understand the difference between the two. Let's say it this way, the virtual machines, you divided or sliced your resources into those, and they're kind of like reserved for each of them. So once you run out of them, you're done, right? So you don't have any more space. Docker is more dynamic in the sense of the one that needs the most kind of like gets the most at that time. But when that changes, when one container needs more than the other, it balances them out automatically so you don't have to do anything. That's it. The installation is done for Docker. 
you close and restart. This is a virtual environment, so it's going to look a little differently. But it would restart the virtual environment, and now you have Docker installed. That's the installation process. Let's just skip ahead. And uh, once you open Docker, it will ask you to sign in. You can sign in with Google. You can sign in with other accounts. Or you can create a Docker account, however you prefer. Um, this is what Docker looks like once you log in. So it looks like this, and it splits stuff into builds, images, and containers. Again, the images is what you're going to download. And once you build them, then they're going to become containers. So that's the process how it goes. You build something, you build an image, and it becomes a container. So that's what I'm going to show because that's that has a, one of those steps that is annoying that that's what we wanted to do. So let's get an image. And what I did is that I we went to GitHub and looked for Anthropics. So if you go to GitHub and look for Anthropics, they have multiple things, right? So let's look at uh, probably the user, right? And they have multiple things. They have courses, cookbooks, and stuff. The one that we care about is the quick start. That's the one they announced recently. And the quick starts have three images, the computer use demo, the computer, or the customer support agent, and the financial data analyst. Those are the three things that we're going to get. What you're going to do is just click on code and download the zip file, right? Once you download it like this, what you get is basically a folder. And I had already downloaded it. That's why I have a duplicated one. You're going to get a folder that when you enter, you have the three folders like this. That's the one that we care about, the computer use demo. And I extracted just that into a folder. So let's go to that folder and look at it. So I had it in lib, three, two, flood, and I put it right there. So that right there is exactly the folder that I had in the zip file. I just drag and drop that because that's the only thing that I care about. And the most important file here is this Docker file right here. That's the one that configures the Docker image itself is going to be red. And there's one step that they don't really mention here because it is it is a security thing, all right? Only people who know a little bit more about it, they, they would go ahead and figure out what to do. But basically, that's what I want to explain. You're going to open the Docker file. You can open it with any editor. It doesn't really matter. It could be Notepad if you want it. That's what the file looks like, you see? The only thing that we have to do here is expose some ports. And that's the part that is kind of like a security thing. So I'm going to copy this, paste it on um, okay. Telegram, basically. So let's go to Hero here. I'm going to paste that. You just have to put that in the Docker file. You can put it almost anywhere. I decided to put it close to the end. You can put it at the top. It doesn't really matter. But these exposures here, I definitely decided to put it before this. I don't think if it, I don't know if it matters, but this is the entry point. That's that's when it starts the thing. So I wanted to expose them before it started. That's why I put them there. In any case, you can put it at the top, at the bottom, in the middle. It doesn't really matter. I just decided to put it there. Once you copy paste that, you're definitely good to go to build your image. And that's the part that is a little bit tricky. Because what you will do in Docker Desktop is that you're going to go to the Images tab right here. And here is where they explain how to run a container. So if you forget, just go to this part, click on it. And here you go step by step. They tell you what to do. We already got the sample application. And this step that says verify your Docker file, that's the one that I just told you about, the Docker file, that I just added the ports. And I'm going to explain why I did that. Now, here is the part that says build your first image. And that's the part that is a little bit annoying. You can copy this, right? You copy it. And down here, you will see that it says terminal. 
So that's the part where we're going to do, we're going to paste that. You have to paste that, but you cannot paste it just like that. So let's just do this. Let's go to the folder where the Docker file is, which is this computer demo. You can just right click on it and copy as path if you want it and just CD onto that location. I'm going to remove the Docker because I just want to go to the folder. And once we are in the folder, now we can run this command. This command has two parts. One of them is the name, sorry, the T here is the name that you're going to add to it. And then we're going to have a file, which is the Docker file. So this, you can name it whatever you want. So let's copy it as computer use for example, and then we're gonna put dash F, which is a file. And that's basically the Docker file that we were just mentioning. Uh, let me see, ah, there it is. The Docker file, that's what you're gonna put there. That's the file that we just modified, right? And once you do that, you put a dot right after it. That means do it right here. That's what it means. So it says, build an image with this name, out of this file that I just modified and do it right here where we are. Once you do that, that's the one thing that you have to do. You will see that it showed up in here with the name that I gave it. Again, you can name it whatever you want. That's it. Hey, Zayas, can you real quickly go copy what the user shift uh, you're up to get the what you just submitted and paste that into the Telegram group too? Right. Let me let me do this one instead. So this is the one that I actually created. Copy that. Whoops. No. To ah. right. Copy. <laughs> yeah. So this is the one command that we have to do on the um, terminal. It could be done in PowerShell. It can be done in CMD, but it's easier if you just do it directly in Docker because you have to be working there. Once it's done and once you see it here, that's it. And I don't really understand why don't they don't have a button that says, give me a Docker file and do this. That's the part that I, I, I wasn't able to find. I don't know where they have that. In any other case, you just do the terminal, do the thing, and now it shows up in the GUI. Once it shows up in the GUI, you have to run it. Before running, it will ask you for a configuration. So when you click on it, it will tell you, hey, we're going to run a new container, configure it. When we open this, you see these ports right here? Those are the ports that I just wrote in the file. And that's the problem. If you don't put this on your Docker file, these ports don't show up and you cannot configure them. But you have to configure them. So that's the part. It is a security feature that you have to put that in the file before building it. Once you build it and run it, you have to configure the ports here. And for ease, for making it easy, you just have to put the same numbers. That way you don't have to worry about it. But if you know what you're doing, you can change those to something that makes sense to you, right? But in any case, I'm just gonna put the same numbers right here. And once you do that, Here's the part, you have some environment variables that you can set up and stuff. We, there is one environment variable that we're gonna set up, but we're not gonna do it from here. We're gonna do it from the image itself. You will see what I mean. Once you do that and click run, the environment is gonna be launched. And what it's doing is creating a virtual computer that is listening to one of those ports that we just set up. Well, it, leads, it listens to two of those ports, the VNC and the 8080 port. And you will see once it finishes, this is the port, one of the ports that we opened, and this is the other port. So 5900 and 8080 are definitely required. The other two aren't. But in any case, once it finishes, you just click on this, and now it's going to connect to um, the, the agent is what we call it. This is the Claude agent. Sometimes it takes a little bit longer to load or not. I just hit enter again and then it loads. I don't know why that is. Sometimes it does it or not. But you will see that you cannot start the application if you don't put your Anthropic key, right? 
How do we set that up? Well, here on the left, you have this little button that now you can put your API key. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pause the, the screen for a second. I'm gonna put the anthropic key there and that's it. You will see in a second how that looks. So let's pause right here. Let me go to where I have the key. So one of the, the weird things to me about this whole process, because I watched a crap load of videos and I finally saw someone doing this from a Windows computer. I'm like, oh, cool. Okay, here's how you do it in a Windows computer. But the instance here in Docker, if you look at the bottom there, clearly the Docker uh, image that you're working with isn't a Windows environment, but you're right. still running it from Windows, right? So um, it it as long as you can like, hey, I have my, like I transfer my Excel file there or I wanna do some automation or whatever, that's fine. It's just, you know, for us, when we go to implement, we won't be implementing in Docker. We'll just use AutoHotkey directly because the API, we can get the results and actually execute AutoHotkey code. So go ahead, it. Definitely. Once you put your API key here, you that's the cool thing. You don't have any buttons to save or anything. You just click outside and you will see that the banner that we have there is gone. And now I have a chat. This is the chat in which you can uh, interact with the with the um, agent. And the idea here is that you will tell the agent what to do, and it will use the things that are available to it in this environment. environment. So here, we have access to an Excel sheet from LibreOffice. We have the Bash, uh, uh, which is a terminal. We have Firefox. We have a Paint, PDF, calculator, so on. But I can now just tell it what to do and he will do it. So I would say, oh, go, yeah. Well, I just want to clarify this. This is where, when I first was thinking about this, I was thinking about doing it more of like, how would I achieve my goal in AutoHotKey? I would say, click this, do No, 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 no. You tell it your goal. You don't tell it the right. house, right? You let it figure it out. And that's the, right. so that's where. where <laughs> and that's the cool thing. You let it figure it out itself. You just want to do something. Hey, go to YouTube to YouTube and find the latest video from Joe Glines and tell me it so so from Joe Glines's uh channel and tell me it's and, and let's say and get the name and save it in to a TXT file and open it. So I'm not gonna tell it how to do it, which is where programming is so complex because you have to figure out how to do it. It itself will start taking screenshots of the environment, know where things are, and move the mouse, look at that, is and move mouse and click somewhere. It decided, okay, let me open Firefox actually, and let me go to YouTube. Now it's gonna take another screenshot and then it will decide what to do and it will try to go to the website that I told it, it will try to search for stuff, all right? Again, the cool thing is AI is looking at the screen and deciding what to do by itself. I'm not touching the computer in any way. It, and Isaiah, I don't think you said it. Not it, it, it says, go do this, and then it has a built-in check, right? Did I, hey, did what I do cause what I was kind of hoping for? Right. That's the really brilliant part. Right. Because it's self checking itself. Am I going? Is am I actually doing what I want to be doing? Right. Which is really cool. Right. Look at that. That at the top it says running. And it is in a loop and a feedback of performing an action, getting an image, deciding if it is done. If it is not done, it will decide what the next action is. And look at it. It actually went to the channel itself. And it actually clicked on videos and it clicked on latest. And now it has the, uh, probably the name. And it tell it told me I've successfully found this and then um, verified it created this file called latestvideo.txt. And it told me it verified the contents and it's good. Let's say, is there anything else that you want me to do? Open the yeah, file. Tell, tell it to like the video. So <laughs> watching this video, yeah. we'll do the same thing. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, but it like does video and open the TXT file. It it does have restrictions on it. it. 
by the way, though. Okay. Oh, no. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't it, know if it will do it. Mostly won't let you purchase things. It won't let you like text people. All oh, right. So this this is the thing. So I apologize. I cannot like the video because that requires interacting with social media that in a way that is not permitted to do. Right. So you cannot do that. But I can help you. Let me open the file with a text editor. Let me see what it's doing. It's trying to do it. Oh, look at that. It's using Bash to open the file. That's interesting. Still running, so it probably hasn't finished. But at some point, it will open the file. Now, as you can see, this is actually mind-blowing for many other reasons. Now, now ChatGPT or AI is actually running a computer, right? And even though this is a Linux environment, I guarantee we could do something very similar with a Windows environment. We would have to figure out how to um, build that environment with Docker, right? But right now, oh, let me see. Wait, no, yeah, I mean, you have to do it with Docker, right? Like the API for Claude has the computer stuff access. We can directly right now send it screenshots and ask it what to do, right? And get the feedback. It's the implementation of sending the mouse click to a certain location or sending a control click, right? Or or, or using um, even UIA, not that I want to go that route, but we'll be able to implement that ourselves in a Windows environment, right? We don't have to use Docker for that is my point. Okay. So I got a little bit of a, because the command that it created, it had an ampersand at the end, and that kind of like blocked it from doing what it was supposed to. Um, but, and, and I ran some into some error, maybe it didn't find what I wanted. Let me see, open the text editor. Let me see if it, if it can do that. No, right now it, is, oh, it seems to be that it's in an error state. So I would have to kind of like yeah. finish up. Something is up. Hey, is this? I we didn't test this. Can you can you use the automators or like a, a our ultimate spy? Can can that the the control that you're editing there? Can we send text? How would we send text to that? Is that possible? So this control here. Yeah. Well, this is a website, so yeah, we can definitely look at that text area and input something in it. Right. So yeah, so right. we can automate that part of. Even though, again, none of I don't think any of us that are in on a hotkey really be want to be working in this environment. But again, it it's still it's it's pretty cool, right? Like, right. I, even though I don't love the methodology they're implementing for achieving the goals, it's a huge step forward. Really cool. Right. Again, this is actually a demo environment. I'm not sure. So right now it is in a invalid state, so I cannot do anything right now. I'm not sure if I could um, do some other things. Now, you will notice something. This is something that I realized when I was uh, playing with this. You cannot click anywhere, all right? That is because this VNC is using a VNC command. This VNC is only for viewing. You cannot click on stuff unless you click on the top here where it says toggle screen control. So if this is going the wrong way or whatever, we can toggle the control. Now it connects to it in a way that you can control the environment. So you can now uh, close it or, uh, let me see, hold on. Yeah, I can close the browser, open something else. So you can actually uh, play with it if you want it. And then you can release control and now let chat GPT do its thing. I'm not sure how to record from this one. I have never seen this error before. Open Firefox, let me see. And Isaiah, remind me of this, because there was another thing, because yeah. we were trying, like I said, we were trying to create an image that we could share easily share so you guys could skip all that pre-configuration stuff, but it, it just wasn't easy. But there was a second one, something about you have to recreate the image or something, Isaiah, like if you close it, you have to, what was that? Um, rebuild it, build it again. Yeah, remember you were telling me something of like I think if you shut it down entirely, you have to rebuild. Right. Is that right? Right. So now, right now, we are connected on this thing. Okay, let me let me go to and this is a good example of why you would need to know that. So this image built a container, and you can see the container here using that image, right? So that's the image that we created. We are running a container. 
And what happens with this container is that when you stop it for whatever reason, you cannot rerun it. At least I haven't found a way. I don't know what is going on. So if I stop this, which is what I have to do right now because it is in an error state, I will stop it, right? I have to close this off, right? So it's stopping the whole thing. From there, usually what happens with that is that you can just click on run again. Here's the run button and it should, you know, rerun it. So let's look at the logs here. Let me see, hold on. Uh, I think the log here, yeah, this is the log. Let me clear the logs. And right here, I click on run or start. And what it does is that it never does. There's always an error regarding the, um, regarding connecting to the environment. I don't know what it is. So it starts like this. After a while, it takes a while and it kind of like gets stuck. And then it tells you that there was an error. So what you have to do is run it again from the image, not the container. Again, think of the container as a virtual computer. So usually virtual computers, you turn it off and turn it back on and that's it. In this case, it says it could not open the display. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. I'm not very knowledgeable on Docker. So maybe I, maybe I am doing something wrong. But here, if this happens and you cannot open the display again, just go to the image again and run it from here. And this, it will do the configuration again. So I have to write this again, 6080, 8080, 8501, and run it. This one will run. So this one will connect normally. But you will see that when I go back to my containers, you will see two containers now one that exited and one that is running. So basically what I just did is create a new container, so to speak. I don't know if that is something that I haven't properly configured or something is wrong or whatever, but that's the way how it works right now. Then I just delete the old ones for now and keep the one that is running. And if I click on it, I can see the logs and now it is connected and I can just click on it again and it will just open it again. But this time I have to put my environment key again. So let me just hit enter again. Well, I, I, that. We're almost out of time anyway, Isaiah. Right. So but in this, any case, yeah. that's how it goes, right? Does I anyone think, have any questions on any of the right. any of this? It's like we said, it's it's quite involved. Um it just still has a <laughs> So yeah, we any questions or comments, uh, let me see. The chat. Would there be uh, a, a Docker image it, with a Visual Studio set up on it? So let's go by parts. I see some questions in the chat, and then I'm going to answer that one. So is, is this the personal version of Docker? Yes, I, I downloaded it. It's free. I didn't have to pay anything. And everything ran without me having to put anything with um, paid version or anything like that. Um, I you say if, if it does require paid Docker and you don't want to pay, you might be able to use Potman Desktop, which is again something similar to Docker and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, at this point, I didn't have to pay anything. Is the personal version? Uh, didn't Joe say you know all the things he says? He's asking no. <laughs> that would be amazing if I knew all the things, but no. Um, the other thing is, and now answering to you, Dale. Remember, as we said, that one in particular, because this is a, a, a thing that Anthropic created, it is a Linux environment and it doesn't have VS Code in it, but you can put it, right? As I showed, you can control the machine and you can download or do whatever you want with the machine. But it is a Linux environment. That's what you have to keep in mind. Um, but again, one of the things is we can create a Docker, Docker container that is a Windows image. And in that case, then yes, it would be, um, uh, you can put auto hotkey or VS code or whatever you want and do the same. Ray asks a very interesting question. Why do you do this in Docker rather than giving a control of an ordinary Windows computer? Let me tell you, the reason why this is not a good idea is that we don't know what AI will do. So we want to restrict it as much as possible, right? 
So Docker is a virtual environment that when I stop it or delete it, it's gone. It's not touching my computer. Right now, they themselves also say, hey, the best you could do is have a, a computer that is not even connected to the internet, all right? And they put some checks in there. Hey, it cannot interact with social media, cannot like videos, it cannot download anything it wants, right? Um, even when you're scraping data, it's very careful with that. It cannot get everything you want. So they are putting checks and balances, but you should also do that. That's the reason why I had to manually modify the Docker file to open some ports because they have it closed by default. So having it, giving it access to your computer is not a good idea right now at all. So I wouldn't do that at all. All right, we gotta um, stop the recording, switch to the normal hero call. Right. Um, but um, those of you who aren't hero members, we, we we do three hours a week of hero calls where we help people with their auto hotkey and automation problems, whatever it is, right? Um, so thanks for watching and you guys just hang out. I'm gonna stop recording and then we'll do a normal call.